Hi everybody. One of the words that our parents wanted us to be able to use early on, a word that they wanted to make sure was in our vocabulary, is the word sorry. If we did something that we're not supposed to do, if we mistreated a brother or a sister, even if we made a mistake, we had to be able to say that word sorry. I'm sorry I knocked over the plant. I'm sorry I hit you. I'm sorry I got mad. It's a very important thing for children to be able to know when to say sorry and to feel sorrow. What I want to think about today is what do we do with sorrow? Where does sorrow go? I got thinking about this yesterday because I watched a, a presentation or a speech by a man named Jamar Tisby who wrote a book called The Color of Compromise about uh, race relations primarily in the United States and uh, talks about uh, race justice and things like that. And he pointed to a verse about sorrow in 1 Corinthians and about what God desires to do with sorrow or what sorrow ought to lead to. So that begins to answer our question, where does sorrow go? Do we just stay sorry or is it energetic? Does it go somewhere? So here's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. So the Apostle Paul here, who's writing, compares godly sorrow and worldly sorrow. And what does he say each one of them leads to? Let's listen to it again. Godly sorrow brings repentance. Worldly sorrow brings death. That's interesting. Godly sorrow has forward momentum into repentance. Now let's put a little bit more bones on, or a little more flesh on the bones here, on what Paul's talking about in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. So we get a sense of the context, the real life situation that he's writing to. He is reflecting back on the earlier letter, the earlier letter that he sent to his friends in Corinth and the fact that it caused them some sorrow. He called out some things that needed to be called out. So I'm going to back up to verse 8 in chapter 7 here. Paul says, Even if I caused you sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it, I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. Yet now I am happy, not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led to repentance. For you became sorrowful as God intended, and so were not harmed in any way by us. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you? Listen to this. Paul is saying, this is what that godly sorrow has done within you. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you? What earnestness, what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what alarm, what longing, what concern, what readiness to see justice done. Paul is saying, sorrow is good if it's godly sorrow and it pushes you forward. It leads to repentance. So we get a sense of what godly sorrow looks like. Now, can we find an example of it in the Bible? Yes, we can. And it's in the very well-known story of Zacchaeus which is in Luke chapter 19, right at the beginning of the chapter. Let's look at Zacchaeus' repentance. So remember, Zacchaeus is a tax collector. Uh, he approaches Jesus. Jesus goes to his house. And it says, all the people saw this, that Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Jesus has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today 
salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. You see what Zacchaeus' repentance looked like. He changed his behavior. He said, if I've cheated anybody, I will pay back four times as much. And that sorrow leading to repentance leads Jesus to proclaim salvation. Just as Paul said, Jesus says to him, salvation has come to this house. So what is repentance? Repentance is one of the most important Christian words. Jesus begins his preaching ministry by saying, repent and believe, repent and believe. Repent is more than be sorry. Repent means changing your behavior. It means a U-turn in your behavior. You used to be going this way, now you're going this way. We see that with Zacchaeus, that his sorrow of who he was led to a repentance, a change in behavior. And that is what I want to point out for us today, that sorrow is not necessarily a bad thing. Sorrow for things that we've done, that's a good thing. We should be sorry, but we shouldn't just dwell on sorrow. Sorrow should lead us to repentance, and repentance, the Bible promises, leads unto salvation. Not that we earn it ourselves, but God does this in us through his Holy Spirit. So sorrow godly sorrow leading to repentance, leading us closer to God.